So here is just sort of like the order that we do all of our first sketches. And steps one and two here are sort of what I called in the past preliminary stuff. Stuff that you know from previous years, grade 11 and grade 12, you should do, if you can, first. You will always be able to find a y-intercept, unless, of course, that's an asymptote, but that's algebraically really easy to do. Sometimes the x-intercepts you can't factor or it might not be possible without a calculator. But we do try to find all of our intercepts to begin with if we can. Then, look for asymptotes. So if you have non-permissible values or a vertical asymptote, that's looking at the limit as x goes to either infinity or negative infinity, then we would draw our asymptotes or find out what our asymptotes are as well. So we do those preliminary things. One of the things that we're looking for with the asymptotes is you might want to, oh, I have to reset my computer setup. Uh, one thing you might want to do with your asymptotes is list the fact that if it's a non-permissible value, you have to remember that you're going to have to put that on all of your number lines as you go through things as well. Because our non-permissible values will be critical points in addition to our stationary points. Next, you're going to find your stationary points and your inflection points. So in this step, well, and I've got it, I've actually, I've actually got it in step four, but this is where you would probably do, if you want to draw a visual for this, your number line for your first derivative, your number line for your second derivative, and find your inflection points and maxes and mins. I put this in here just to remind you of the second derivative tendency. So you find your first derivative, draw your number line for your first derivative. This would be your first derivative test, where you just do the arrow up and arrow down. You're like, I know where it's equal to zero. I know where it's increasing before, decreasing after, right? Second derivative line will give you concave up. You can have a smiley face here, concave down. Think about the snowstorm. Everything is good. This morning, it wouldn't, everything worked out perfectly fine, but I was like, oh, I'm going to go to a different Tim Hortons to pick up donuts for the math contest because it will be more efficient because it's right on my way. I phoned the wrong Tim Hortons. So I got to the Tim Hortons that was going to be the most efficient one, and I'm like, I'm here to pick up three dozen donuts. And they said, which Tim Hortons did you order from? And I said, the Apple. And they said, that's the other one, back where you came from. Only five minutes. So I was like, <clears throat> so I had to make a U-turn. Of course, the first place where I could make a U-turn, there's a big sign that says, no U-turn. <laughs> so I had to go further. But I got the donuts, and I got here in more than enough time, because as you saw, the person who was covering for the math contest also got stuck in the snow and wasn't here on time. So. That sometimes happens. But next time, it'll work. I will, be, I will figure out which is the right Tim Hortons and do the efficient so I don't have to turn off the door. Oh, it's going to be such a smart idea until I screw up. So this is our curve sketching. So basically, the way, I mean, simplest. What you would do is you do your preliminary stuff, which is, right? And sometimes if you have something that's like 
this is a memorization technique for you when you go to university. If you have something like, if you remember 15 things, that's too much. But if you can break it down into smaller chunks, and if those smaller chunks, like it's actually easier to remember five things that each have three points. In other words, you're memorizing 15 things. It's easier to do that than it is to memorize 15 things all at once. So if you can chunk things down into smaller sections, so like preliminary has intercepts and asymptotes, right? Then first derivative and second derivative number lines. From that, it's going to be easy to find maxes and mins and increasing and decreasing and constants up and constants down. And now you're like, oh, curve sketching only has two things I have to know. And from those two things, I know all these other things. And all of a sudden, something with a lot of steps and a lot of information becomes easier for you to remember. So today's class is going to be just a bunch of review of things that we've done so far. Okay, and we're going to go through each of these sort of in that idea. And I'm going to, okay, you don't have to write this out, just so you can see. Okay, so in my head I think, okay, I need to do my preliminaries. That's going to be my x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Y-intercept is always the easiest one to start off with. Plug in zero. And you would get zero for y. Your x-intercept is a little bit more work. You plug in zero for y and are going to have to solve. In this case, you can factor out an x. And again, this too, you wouldn't have to write that down. But I would have that go through my mind. Right? As part of the preliminaries, I want to check if there's asymptotes. I want to check if there's non-permissible values. So by me writing it down, I'm telling you what I would have done in my head. In my head, I would have went, mm -hmm, yep. And no, I wouldn't have written anything. Because I but I would have checked. So I write it down now just to remind you that, oh yes, I'm always checking that as part of my preliminary. Next, and I'm just going to call this section derivatives, because we are going to find our first derivative oh, before spring break. We always did the first derivative in one color and the second derivative in another color. Do you remember what those colors were? I mean, this is very important. I'll switch it up now. It could be disastrous for some of you. Second derivative was purple. First derivative, green? Okay. Oh, and I made my titles green. I should have. Perfect. Now we can go to green and not have it confused with our titles being blue. So our first derivative in this case, notation-wise, we've got f of x. I'm going to write f prime of x. So 3x squared minus 4, we set our derivative 
equal to zero. Okay. This one, we have to do an analysis. Do I want to factor? Do I want to isolate x? I think in this sense, it makes the most sense to isolate the x squared. And then you can square root both sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. I'm going to just leave it as a big square root of 4 thirds. We could simplify that if you wanted to. Mathematically, the best way to have this written in the end would have square root of 4 is 2. That would be root 3. And then mathematicians would want you to rationalize the denominator. So in a textbook, it would probably show up as 2 root 3 over 3. I'm happy leaving it as the square root of 4 over 3. Okay? Plus or minus. So we can draw our number line. And we can put negative root 4 over 3 and positive root 4 over 3. Got to be careful here. I would have lost a half mark here because I need the whole thing in the square root. And we're going to use some test values. Okay? Um, in this case, we have no factored version of it. So we're going to have to plug it back into. That's some, why we always label or try to remember to label that number line as our derivative line. We're going to plug numbers into our derivative. So plugging numbers into our derivative means I'm going to plug it into here. I hope you can see that when you plug in 0, this section is negative, decreasing. And plugging in a number bigger than the square root of 4 over 3. Okay? We don't really need to evaluate this, but sometimes you can just say, like, I'm pretty sure 100 is bigger. And if I square 100 and times it by 3 and I subtract 4, I'm pretty sure that's going to be positive. Same thing with a negative number because it's x squared. So we have sort of mental math strategies we can use to get these values quickly. So now what do we know? We know from the first derivative test, this is a maximum, this is a minimum. It's so obvious from the first derivative test that if I asked you to explain it, you'd probably lose marks because it seems so obvious. Remember, if you had to explain the first derivative test, you have to re-say that f prime at this point is equal to 0, and then say increasing before decreasing that. So, but in your head, you just go, okay, I know it's a maximum, I know it's a minimum. In a curve stretching question, they're not going to ask you to explain the first derivative test. You can just go to this point and this point, and that one's a max, and this one's a minimum. And if we go to our original question, and we plug this in to find out what the point is. So remember, when you're trying to find points on your actual graph, you would have to plug them in to the original equation. 